Good afternoon, everybody. It is September 8th today. Uh, Ashton, myself, Donovan, and Tim, and we're just getting moved up here. And there's a vehicle coming, of course, there is. So I am in the D450 Swather here. We just picked this Swather up um, in the fall. Okay, I gotta let you go. Sorry about that. There is a semi coming way up there, and uh, we have a 40 foot table on this D450 we just picked up. Um, we, I, myself, and my family, we have had a D450 in the past. It was back in 2013. We bought it new. We used it for, I think, one or two falls, and we actually traded it on another combine. So I'm a little bit familiar with them, but I'm quite rusty. So uh, this one is, I think, a 2013 as well. Has a few hours on it now. Uh, just about 2,000 engine and 1350 separator, I guess, or header hours. And uh, anyways, we're just getting up to the North Farm here, nicely settling in. It's two semis coming. Oofty. And uh, we're actually on our way to uh, start cutting down that next era canola that we seeded into that grass. I just gotta make sure no one's coming behind me. I can't see. We do have a hydraulic swath roller on this puppy uh, right here. And I took my GPS out and I uh, threw it in here out of that tube. So yeah, we do have uh, auto steer in this puppy. And uh, I did do a little swathing of some wheat at the, right at the yard just to kind of make sure this thing was going to work and operate. I am having a little bit of issues. This side is hanging lower. Okay, we got to go. All right, sorry about that. But when we got to go, we got to go. We got to get on the road when we find a break because we're traveling right down the middle of the highway with a 40-foot header. So um, anyway, we're doing a terrifying 20 miles an hour. And in a swather, woo! That is terrifying. I don't know how many of you guys have driven swathers and all you swather operators, you know. You know. Oh. I might see if I, I might knock down a few green sloughs here of some wheat on our way by. We're going by one of our feet. This is actually Ashton's quarter. She bought. Can't tell if there's anyone behind me. I would look. Okay, hold on. Just check. Nope, we're good. Anyways, yes, so left hand side hanging lower than the right hand side. Not sure why that's happening. Um, yes, everything's calibrated. No, my air tire pressures are good. In fact, I even aired up this main tire just a okay, easy there, buddy. Easy. Small increments, very small increments. Or we'll do a 360 and head back the other direction, and we don't want that. Whew. Could have been close. We are still cruising down the road here and uh, met limited traffic. Probably four more miles and we will be at the field that we want to get to. Definitely a lot louder in here than the X9, that's for sure. But it's also screaming at like nearly 2,500 RPM. Holy cow, this little engine just is screaming away. I wonder why. The X9 is only 1,900, and the S series is uh, like 2,100 or something like that. All right, we finally got off the highway. Now we're just going down this trail. Those are the oats over there that we seeded into the grass that we broke. And we seeded some oats into some grass that we didn't break as well. You guys remember? And the next era, Nola that was seeded into the grass. Uh, it's just up here. We idled down to the 50% mark in 1870. I know, right? That's the 50%. That's basically wide open on the X9. It was 1900. So. Ashton's not here to, you know, give us advice or anything, so Mike's a bit of a noob. So, what could possibly go wrong, I guess? I guess I could start opening it the wrong way. Leave lots of little beaver huts or dams, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, I think I'll swath this east and west because the wind always pr prominently blows. Like, it's a 60K wind out there today, and it's blowing out of the west. So, I think that want to go east and west less chance of our swabs blowing away we don't want our swabs to blow away all right 
I realize you guys are looking into the sun and you can't really see this, but uh, the canola uh, seed, so in order to know when you swath, is you gotta open up a little pod and you gotta look at the seeds and see how they're changing color. And uh, I think you want to start around that 60% seed change color. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's something like that. And obviously it depends on weather, you know, do you have some nice little drizzle that's coming to kind of help you swath in so that way it keeps your uh, pods from shattering? Um, is it gonna freeze? Everything changes by the weather. You'll be surprised what you'll do and what you won't do based on the weather. But anyways, this stuff is around that 50 to 60, so it's just a little bit on the green side in some of the low spots, but it is pushing that 70 plus percent up on the hills, So, and this is not in vigor, so this does not have much for shad potter. Um, resistance or whatever you want to whatever you want to call that so this stuff will shell out once it starts drying up and we don't really want that so we kind of want to just split the difference yes it's probably too ripe on the hilltops and probably a little too green in the low spots but we have lots of hilltops and lots of low spots so you just kind of mix them off and i need to get going because our invigor uh i don't know why i panned over here other than just to give you another angle of this of what the canola looks like our invigor canola it's about 80 to 90 percent color change already so that's really coming in quick this next area is a little gr slower growing season yes i could start on the invigor first but all the invigor is a lot farther away and uh, i literally go right past this next era so i want to just get this next era down get it in a swath so i don't have to worry about trying to backtrack for it uh in about a week or so in time so we got a lot of invigor to cut down so we're just gonna wrap up this little bit next era and then we'll start chowing on the bigger. So now, in saying that, I think I told you that this is a D450. And yes, I have a little bit of experience, small amount of experience. I did take the guidance out of that two track. I already told you that already. We do have a swath roller. Pretty sure I told you that as well. And uh, what else? We should probably unpin our swath roller. So it's pinned up, so let's just lift it up here. Make sure it's all the way up and then we'll just run out and pull the pins out. They're just pinned in here. So a swath roller, um, some guys use them, some don't. This particular swather came with a swath roller. So we will as well use it. Now in saying that, it's supposed to kind of fluff it down, push it into the push it into the canola stubble a little bit better. So that way you have a less chance of your canola swabs blowing away in theory all right so we've pulled the pins out now i'll just hit the lower hydraulic by the look of it it goes down way slower than it comes up I don't know if this just goes down to a stop or I don't know I haven't used it before so we're just gonna trial and by air here I guess so I guess that's as far as it goes hmm. all right well anyways let's cut into this stuff and we're making our first pass. And we're in some ruts here apparently, it's quite bouncy. Whoa, 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 sorry, I can't do, I can't do all this, I guess. But I am trying. Trying to make me sick here. It's a really nice canola crop. Doing about three and a half mile an hour here right now.
That roller that you see is hydraulically driven. It's not a swath roller like it punches it down and it calls some sort of an atomizer or whatever it is. Uh, it's to help get it out of that header. That's what it's there for. It's got fingers in it. stuff it doesn't like to cut very good I gotta adjust stuff wow I can't really get it out of the swather here it's intense This stuff here is actually stuff I broke. I broke all these first rounds, which is the reason why it's so stinking rough here. I keep grabbing a few of those big dirt clumps. But apparently it still grows canola. Pretty evident. Some swath back there. This first round is incredibly rough. Yes. Remember when I said I just dissed it and I didn't get back to doing pro tilling on it or anything? I just literally just seeded that last little bit. Heck, you can even see it. See how that, see that 16 feet? The thickest stuff is actually the roughest. Isn't that interesting? This is the stuff direct seeded. This side was just dissed one time, opened it up. Remember when I was, uh, remember when I was spraying it and I said, hey, this stuff that is thinner and dissed might actually be better. I don't know if I said be better or not, but anyways, you're, you're seeing the difference right there. Although I'm glad that I did it because I don't think I would have been able to keep my sanity and ride the swather. But maybe the stuff that we broke might yield more. Well, guys. I think I'm gonna let you go here. Uh, I'm gonna do some swathing, and uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna do some swathing. But I you really need to start combining some meat here. Maybe even tomorrow. So we'll see how this goes. Anyways, you guys have yourself a good one, and I'm sure we'll do some more swathing videos. I'm sure we will. Okay, guys. Talk to you later. Adios, amigos.